of exactly how the storm could potentially impact both states. Now we've made it easy for you to get up to date minutes using our storm shield app. And once you have the app, all you have to do is access your warning and advisories right in the palm of your hand. Now again, it's free and it's available for both your Apple and Android devices. And with another rain producing storm on the way, neighbors in Quincy are looking to their city council for solutions to stop their ongoing problem of flooding. Yeah, those that live off of Virginia Street and Flagger Street in Quincy are still recovering from floodwaters after a rainstorm just a week ago. Now they have to brace for some more. WTXL ABC 27's Carl Bailey is live in the studio with details from city leaders on how they plan to help out. Carl, what have we learned from the mayor? Well, Angela, Quincy Mayor Keith Dowdell and other members of the City Council met Tuesday night to discuss and review a city budget to repack parts of their city. Now, we did show you earlier video where heavy rain impacted the area and had lots of flood water from a recent storm. The pipes that are currently in place near Virginia and Flagler Streets are only about two inches. Now, the goal is to replace them with pipes that are large enough to prevent water from overflowing. What I'm trying to do is get the city manager, get an engineer, go out there and see how much it's going to cost to repack that area. Mayor Dowdell says that now is the time to change a recurring issue and to begin a new process that will hopefully resolve the flooding. The city council was not able to come up with a decision during Tuesday's budget meeting, but they do plan to meet again to discuss it further. Now their next meeting is scheduled for September 10th. Live in studio, I'm Cara Bailey, WTXL ABC 27. Hey, thanks, Cara. And after last week's 32 inches of rain, the flooding problems still exist in Taylor County. Many people are staying with friends away from those flooded areas. Melanie Atkins tells us that her concern is that if Dorian comes to that area, it could take weeks or even months to get steam hatchy cleaned up. My concern is that we won't have anything then. It'll be solid water and I don't know if we'll get help from the county. I don't know if we'll get help from the government, but I would like it pumped out and um, you know, we have each other. And that's important, but it is very frightful to think that we might get more rain. Atkins says that she doesn't plan to evacuate and will ride out the storm if it does come into this area. Taylor County leaders have also said that they will begin sandbag distrib distribution at three locations within the county starting later on today at noon. And as for evacuations, Franklin County emergency management officials are reminding people who live there to get re-entry tags now in the event that the county issues mandatory evacuation orders. If there is a mandatory evacuation, you will need a re-entry tag to get back into the county. You can get those tags at the Franklin County Emergency Management Office or at franklinemergencymanagement.com. Now you will need a driver's license or photo ID and two forms of proof of ownership of property or rental of property. Remember, once the EOC has been activated, no tags will be issued, so get them now just in case. And tonight is the season opener for Florida A&M football. Now the Rattlers are in Orlando to face number 17 UCF. The Knights, they've only lost one game over the past two years. Meanwhile, the Rattlers, they're coming off a 6-5 season. WTXO ABC 27's Lori Burring will be live in Orlando with coverage of that game starting tonight at 5. So make sure you tune in for all of that action. Time now, almost 5.38. We're taking a look outside over St. Teresa. We're still dark outside sunrise in about an hour and a half. So it's going to look like this for a while. Mostly clear sky zone. It's a pretty quiet morning on that commute. Just a little bit of patchy fog over towards Live Oak and Columbia counties where you got I-10 and I-75 beating up. Other than that, all clear as you leave the house. No rain. A cold front's passing through. Now, there's no cold. It's more of a dry front by nature here. Anytime you get a cold front in August, I can assure you it's not going to be cold, but we're going to be a bit drier this morning. Hard to tell. Southern Georgia might be able to feel it a bit more with those temperatures in the lower 70s. Dew points will be dipping down into the mid to upper 60s for today and tomorrow morning. So when you step outside tomorrow morning, I wouldn't say it's going to feel refreshing or fall like, but it just won't be so humid outside, which is nice this time of the year. Tighten radar loop. Bone dry, no rain out there. Probably not going to be seeing any showers or storms until tomorrow afternoon, evening. Your wheel of weather shows temperatures warming up pretty quickly. So again, a cold front passing through, but since it's only bringing dry air, that dry air will heat up more efficiently. We'll likely see temperatures climb near 95 degrees here in Tallahassee today with sunny skies. It's going to be nice out, just a little bit on the toasty side. We're talking about Dorian coming up in a few minutes. It is 539. Here's a look at your first alert traffic. 
an overview of everything that's happening across the Big Bend area right now. Earlier, there were some delays um, right at west of I-10. Those delays are now over, so you have a smooth ride making your way into Valdosta if you're headed up I-75 or into Tallahassee. Right now, this hour, just the minor delays that you see as you approach the metro area of Tallahassee, everything is green, so that is a good start to your Thursday morning. And if you're jumping on the major thoroughways in the area, everything looks smooth. Just take your time, be patient, and buckle up and be safe. That is a look at your first alert traffic. <laughs> It's an esteemed honor for anyone to be able to take the stage at Carnegie Hall, and one that's going to be extended to an elementary school right here in the capital city. They'll tell you which school and how you can help them get there. And here's a look at last night's Powerball, Florida Lotto, as well as the Fantasy Five numbers. And good luck. Welcome back. Time now is 543. If we're heading to the bus stop this morning, it's going to be a little bit warm and humid. Pretty typical for this time of the year. Now this afternoon, we're staying dry. Lots of sunshine in this forecast as humidity slowly dips. But temperatures will be climbing into the mid 90s, around 94, 95 degrees. It's going to be a hot afternoon with plenty of sunshine packed with water. I got details on Dorian coming up in a minute. The Palm Beach Zoo, home to approximately 1,000 animals, is hoping to keep them all safe and cost low as Hurricane Dorian approaches. Yeah, the zoo suffered $700,000 in damages following Hurricane Irma. And they're still working to recoup that cost. Arthur Mondeo has more. This cowbell is how Palm Beach zookeepers alert animals that a storm is coming and they need to seek shelter. Some will take... A little bit more convincing. We have some 50-mile winds or even 30-mile winds. If one of these trees that have been here for many years, 50 years, happens to blow over on this fence, that's not a good situation. So we avoid bad situations like that by training all of our animals to recall, including our birds. It could hurt the animals and you have to, they have to be prepared. Oh wow, look. The zoo says all animals will be relocated to shelter. 20% will need to be housed at an off-site location. But there's also trees horticulture teams have trimmed and flood mitigation. So we've got a number of pumps that are available that keep the water at a certain level. The cost of a storm isn't pretty. According to the zoo CFO Kathleen Breland, Hurricane Irma damaged the zoo's administration building, a number of primate and wallaby exhibits, trees, and fencing, totaling approximately $700,000. The zoo is still working to recoup the cost from FEMA's public assistance program two years later. So my primary job over the next three days is to keep the staff calm. Now, management says there are a dozen hurricane shelters for those animals. But preparedness before a major storm at the 23 Acre Zoo also includes a focus on trees and the water. The preparation is the key word across the entire state of Florida. Red Cross officials say that all of their volunteers are on standby. and The shelter teams are ready to go across the region from Jacksonville all the way to Pensacola. Now, right here in Tallahassee, the American Red Cross is preparing now in case Hurricane Dorian hits our area. The Red Cross has ordered pushbacks, which are full of supplies for volunteers and all of those impacted by a disaster. Now, they include blankets, cleanup kits, cots, ready-made meals, and IT equipment, which can all be set up at their headquarters. Officials say that people need to stay informed. We need them to listen to the news, you know, to, and to obey whatever our elected officials tell us to do. If they tell us to, to evacuate, we need to do that. We need to, um, there are a lot of lessons learned from Michael, so I'm hoping that people really heed those lessons. Volunteers are at Red Cross's Tallahassee Warehouse packing up supplies to take east towards Jacksonville. The Red Cross is using technology called RC View on their computers and smartphones, which helps the organization track storm damage and get help quickly to all of their clients. Students with Hartsville Elementary Chorus are heading to Carnegie Hall. Wednesday, the chorus launched their fundraising campaign to, for a performance trip next year. Now, parents, teachers, students, and community members all gathered to show support for this multi-award winning ensemble. Director Arnequa Jackson says that the kids are very excited, but the trip is about more than just music. They are so excited. I told them we have to do a geography lesson. Just know where exactly where New York is so, because some of my kids have never traveled outside of Leon County, and this is an opportunity of a lifetime. Now the chorus needs to raise $65,000 to get to New York. They are hoping to have the money raised by the end of this year. To find out how you can donate, visit our website at WTXL.TV.
Time now is 547, sunrise about 711 this morning. We got a ways to go, so FSU's weather stem loop still dark. Not much to see. Visibility looking pretty good for most of us over towards I-75, I-10 interchange there near Live Oak further into Lake City. Some dense fog, so that's just a heads up if you are heading I-10 east towards that area or I-75 south you might come across some visibility issues. Temperature a little bit cooler in southern Georgia as this drier air filters in a cold front passing through. Not really any cold air behind it, but some drier air. Lower 70s probably feels a bit uh, less humid. Again, you can't even call that refreshing, but it's not oppressive when you walk out. Tomorrow, that should be more area wide. Your Titan radar, quiet. The rain, you got a dry day on tap. Some coastal flood watches in effect for North Florida up through the Carolinas. Your forecast and focus for today. Again, this front sinks down, bringing lots of dry air, especially in the mid and upper levels, but a little bit here at the surface that you will be able to notice tomorrow morning. Probably again, it's just not going to feel so humid outside. Not exactly refreshing. Rain returns tomorrow. We'll talk about that in the seven day, but I want to spend some time on Dorian. Max winds at 85 miles per hour now. Still a category one north of Puerto Rico. The track pretty consistent with model guidance after about 48 hours. That's when things get a little hairy. You have solutions all the way from South Florida through up to the Carolinas. Now locally, what does that mean for us? Well, for a strong Cat 3 to make it through South Florida over the Everglades and spit back out in the Gulf. A pretty good chance for that to redevelop. And then you're looking at a Gulf Coast landfall on the table. That would kind of maximize impacts here in the Panhandle. Further to the right, we're seeing the storm right up the coast or just move inland. Bring us some rain, periods of sogginess. But for the most part, direct impacts would be very limited. So still lots of uncertainty, lots of potential scenarios here to unfold that we will continue to watch. Out of the water, 2 to 3 feet. Winds 10 to 15 knots. A little choppy out there. 95 for the high in Tallahassee. It's going to be hot. 70 over night. Not so bad. Again, lower humidity for tomorrow morning and typically that's going to mean some cooler air with it, but not really this time. Just going to feel nice Friday morning. Temperature still warming up nicely and rain chances staying low. Second half of your forecast Sunday through early next week basically is all up to what Dorian decides to do. So that forecast will be changing again. Lots of uh, possibilities still on the yes, table. The word possibility.